All right. Um, next one I'll do is a strong induction uh, example, and I'll do one that's rather important, which would be our fundamental theorem of algebra, and which is again for any number two, three, four, etc. And so the elements that I'm working with are obviously starting at 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So the first element we have is 2. Every one of these numbers is either a prime or can be written uniquely as a product of primes written in non-decreasing order. Uh, what we won't do for this one is we won't talk about uniqueness. Uh, this particular proof was done back in the number theory section, so you can see that in the textbook. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do is just the fact that we'll talk about the existence, that it can be written. So it's either a prime or we'll ignore uniqueness for a second. Uh, we're just going to say it's, it's either a prime or a product of primes in non-decreasing order. And so to do this proof requires, the true proof requires two things. One, it requires existence, which is going to be this proof. And then the second thing it requires is uniqueness, which is going to be that proof. So we're only going to talk about existence for this particular proof, and that's where strong induction comes into play. So our statement is any number, 2, 3, 4, up to infinity, is either a prime or it's a product of prime. So for us, is n equal to 2, 3, 4, etc., is prime or a product of primes. That's what I want to show. All right, uh, the proof of this particular thing is going to be by strong induction. Again, the basis is still the same. Uh, we need to show true for uh, the first element. Well, that's pretty easy. n equal to 2 is prime. <laughs> and so, obviously, it's true. <laughs> You're saying it's either a prime or a product of primes. What about 2? Uh, that's prime. Okay, it's true. The very first number that I have to deal with is a prime, so we're good. Uh, the basis is actually true. Now comes the inductive and this is going to be strong. And so what happens here is, again, we, we would assume that it's true. Again, what does it mean? Assume that 2, 3, 4, up to k, right? That's what I'm going to do. That 2, 3, 4, everything up to k are so These numbers are prime. Or a product of primes. So we just don't assume the kth. We assume that everybody up to k. So 2 is either a prime or a product of primes. 3 is either prime or a product of primes. 4 is either prime or a product of primes. 5 is either prime or a product of primes. Every number that I know, right, is either going to be a prime or a product of primes all the way up to a k. And then what we want to show, and so this idea of p of the first element, which by the way is n equal to 2, and p of the second element, which by the way is n equal to 3, and let's just go all the way up to p of n equal to k, and then I want to show that this implies p of n equal to the next guy, which is k plus 1. So we're just going to take these numbers and show that they together form the second. All right. So that's what we're assuming. We will now show that n equal to k plus 1 is prime or a product of primes. Well, let's look at this number, right? All numbers, no matter what, are either prime or composite. We, we know that. And so, because all numbers are prime or composite, 
then we have two cases. Case one, the number we landed on is prime. And so we would be done, right? Then the conjecture is true, right? If, if you land on a prime, it's, it's, it's a prime, so the conjecture is true. So that's my first possibility. Uh, the other one's a little bit more work. What if n equals k plus 1 is not prime? It's composite. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, composite, which is not prime. Okay, prime numbers mean, and we remember, so note, prime means that only one times the prime are the only factors, right? That if you would factor it, you only get one, one in itself. That's it. Those are the only factors. So if I tell you that that is not true, <laughs> if I tell you that, that 1 and the prime are not the only factors, for example, 12. 12 is equal to 2 times 6, right? Sure, it has 1 times 12, but it's composite because it has others, right, that are not 1 and 12. That's what makes 12 a composite. So to be composite means to be not prime. And so being not prime, so the number has to have two numbers that multiply, right, uh, that are somewhere between, they're not 1 and they are not k plus 1, right? And a is somewhere between 2 and k. Right? Because if we had the numbers 1, 2, 3, all the way up to k, all the way up to k plus 1, right? Primes have factors that are here and here. That's what makes it prime. Composite are factors of, well, others. <laughs> Something else. I don't know which, and you know, it really don't it doesn't matter. It's just there's some other numbers that multiply together to make the number. And so the numbers themselves are they're they're definitely, right? You would say it's the numbers are strictly bigger than 1, which means it's at least 2, and they're definitely smaller than k plus 1, which means it has to be less than or equal to k. But that's also true, right, for b. Both of these numbers, I don't know what they're I don't know what they are, but I know that they're bigger than 1 and smaller than k plus 1. Well, here's the deal. What is my assumption? Every number from 2 to k is either prime or a product of primes. So if, which is a bunch of primes multiplied together, so if that's true, so by the inductive hypothesis, right, which is, oh, forgot, I don't know if I've said that yet, right, this assumption is called, the first thing that you assume, the left-hand side here, is called your inductive hypothesis. In other words, it, normally you would say this is IH for inductive hypothesis. So by the inductive hypothesis, A is equal to a, you know, a, a multiplication of primes. It's either prime or product of primes. And then also, by the inductive hypothesis, b is equal to a prime, or it's a bunch of primes, product of primes. Well, either way, that tells you that k plus 1 being a times b is going to definitely be a product of primes. And then hence, the conjecture is true, and we are officially done. And so the reason why I needed strong induction is because um, I don't know <laughs> which of the numbers between 2 and k actually multiply to become k plus 1. I have no idea, and it really doesn't matter. I just need to have two of these. I don't, it's not, honestly, it's never going to be k, but it doesn't matter. 
um, this requires two numbers somewhere between 2 and k that are either prime or product of primes. And when we multiply them, they're product of primes. And therefore, this is true. And so this is an example of using strong induction to be able to prove a problem. And this, in particular, is part of the proof of the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It proves the existence. Uh, uniqueness is back in the number theory section.